The International Maritime Organization regulates uh, marine shipping. What brought me here to the IMO? I believe that uh, at the IMO there's a lack of Indigenous representation um, as well as a lack of uh, ind Indigenous participation, especially what comes into the Arctic. Why we're doing this film is to show people back home about why the IMO is important, why we do need to get Indigenous representation at the IMO, why we need to have consultative status and why we need to be heard by not just this body but also our country delegations, the shipping companies, the NGOs involved and all the other stakeholders. I feel some responsibility to inform IMO and country which is representing in, at the IMO what, uh, who we are, I mean Arctic people, and what we want uh, from IMO to, uh, to, to live together. The Arctic has become a very important place for global policy makers, for researchers, and of course companies who now seek uh, the rich resources that are now becoming much more accessible due to the ice melt. So this interest though has to be better informed by the awareness of what is happening to the very uh, largely indigenous and subsistence oriented communities which really provide that human face to the Arctic. Inuit and other vulnerable peoples are being asked to pay the price for the unsustainable choices most of the world continues to want to maintain. I'm here at the IMO um, hoping that this body will take some measures to protect the Arctic from heavy fuel oil usage. Heavy fuel oil, the dirtiest fuel that can possibly be burned uh, for shipping or power generation, is very potentially very per persistent in the Arctic. It's very difficult to clean up and we have no experience with a heavy fuel oil spill in the Arctic, uh, much less uh, experience with success in cleaning up oil spills in the Arctic. Where I am from in Northwest Alaska, we deal with some 14 to 19,000 gallons annually of oil or hazardous substance spilled. And so the consequences for our people and our wildlife are, are, very, are very serious. HFO is the dirtiest fuel that ships could use and unfortunately it's the most common a fuel that ships use in the Arctic. Even if there is no spill, there's still dirty emissions that goes onto the snow and into the ocean and it uh, pollutes uh, all through the food chain for the marine environment. So we're trying to ban the use of HFO uh, by these large shipping companies. Cruise ships have some 40 sources of potential discharge. And certainly one of those potential sources of discharge from heavy fuel oil usage uh, is black carbon. Cruise ships have the ability to carry thousands of people and with that requirement uh, comes a lot of need for the use of uh, a lot of heavy fuel oil. So you take all of these things that cruise ships have the potential to do, uh, exacerbate climate change, uh, create pollution in our marine environment and it just spells a recipe for disaster. A lot of these issues whether it's POPs, whether it's CO2s, whether it's the heavy oil that's going on and the dialogue uh, internationally, we have to think about all of these things in terms of fundamental human rights of people who rely on the healthiness of their environment and the climate to survive on a daily, daily basis. In the Arctic, the constant state of emergency for us in our communities has become a norm leaving a huge psychological impact on our communities. We are still reeling from the first wave of tumultuous changes and the intergenerational historical traumas brought on by colonialism. As we better understand these histories of suppression and oppression and try to move beyond them, we now face another trauma to our world, and that's climate change. There are a lot of indigenous people that live in the Arctic um, a lot of Indigenous people, mainly Inuit, who rely on, 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 the, on the environment and on, on the wildlife. Um, developing shipping regulations and other policies in the Arctic without Inuit involvement, um, uh, I believe it's unfair to, to Inuit. Um, there's, there have been uh, regulations made in Antarctica 
uh, there are regulations being made in the Arctic and there seems to be a lack of indigenous involvement and inclusion on this as well as uh, is, is the role that Inuit and Indigenous communities play um, with Indigenous and local knowledge. I believe that we can develop policy um, as best, as the best way forward for Inuit to ensure that our livelihoods and our, and our social well-being is taken care of as it's developed to, to ensure that sh um, safe and sound shipping regulations are made uh, um, through the Northwest Passage and other passages uh, um, in the Arctic, like the, the, the Northern Shipping Route. Uh, the, I believe uh, for, for, for Inuit to, to feel good about this, we need to be involved on a way forward. Over the last couple of years that I've come here, myself and my colleagues, we have provided Indigenous perspectives about Arctic communities. I sincerely hope that this body uh, has listened to what we have to say, as well, uh, I hope this body reaches out uh, to Arctic communities, Arctic communities which have Indigenous knowledge, when we combine Indigenous knowledge and incorporate that with Western science, the result is a better outcome for the Northern Bering Sea and Arctic communities. We just want to inform. I am more a, a country which is a member of, of this organization which, which we are living there. And we live there for millennia. Uh, and, and we want to continue our life there. And they need to respect us. We need to. Actually, it's a mutual process. We need to respect uh, pro, uh, the, uh, the, the challenges and problems of mankind, but it's, uh, uh, we, need to, uh, we, w we want uh, to get this some, the same attitude to us. I would say really listen to uh, people from the Arctic. We, our people have been there for thousands of years. We have a lot of local and traditional knowledge that uh, they could use and they, they could collaborate with us on. We want to make sure that our waters are protected. We want to work with uh, the shipping community. Um, we want to learn about the shipping community. We want to see what that could mean for our uh, environment. And so really um, not just listen, but collaborate with us and educate, help educate uh, the communities about the potential impacts, but also um, the economic uh, ramifications of uh, increased shipping in the Arctic. And I think people back home, you know, even just talking with them, they're so interested in hearing about how they could be more involved in these sort of issues and how they could make a difference.